Hi y'all, it's Bob Lindy at the Tradition School of Herbal Studies in St. Petersburg, Florida. I wanted to take a minute and talk to you about one of my favorite plants to discuss. This is Biden's Alba. No, this isn't a political statement. Yeah, I was thrown off of Facebook once because I did another video like this. Bi dense is bi is two, dense is teeth, alba, think the alabaster cliffs of Dover, and so means white. So this is the, it has a two-pronged seed uh, that will stick to you, not in a painful way, but in an irrita irritating way to get it off of your pants and your socks and your animals. Uh, and most of your Biden's flowers are all yellow petals, and so this one is uniquely got those white petals on there. Also, it's oftentimes thought that this is a Laminaceae because of the square stem. It is not. This is in the Aster family. We can see all of those multitude. Ooh, that's a tough one. Look at all of those tiny little flowers in there. So um, this is an Aster, not a mint. And it does have kind of a square stem. So it has some of those identifying characteristics, but very different. And if you look at the leaf, erp. That is a single leaf, right? It's a compound leaf there. Waha. And this was a great plant. We can use this um, as a spit poultice. Ooh, let's make one of those. So I can chew this up and put it on me. Um, if it's my own spit, it's okay. But most people seem to get a little upset when I start spitting green juice on them. So another way to do a spit poultice is just to mash that leaf up. And you see we've turned it kind of dark and it's all wet now. And um, we can use this on bug bites, abrasions. It's antimicrobial. I've had amazing success with this on ant bites, on mosquito bites. But those people have a really strong histamine response to those mosquito bites. This is, can be magical. Usually within a minute, it quickly reduces or eliminates that swelling. Um, it's also food. And one of the things I always tell folks in my class is if you're growing lettuce and you uh, you start eating it, it's super yummy. But as soon as it goes to flower, it bolts. All of a sudden, it gets bitter, and so we throw it in the compost pile. Well, the same is true of this. If we want some Bidens and we want to uh, use it for a salad or soups or stews, it's better to get it before it goes into flower. That way, it's not quite so bitter. But if we want the medicine, we want to pick the leaves from one that's gone to flower. The bitter is the real medicine. Oh, and did I mention that this is bee food? Come here, bee, I want to take a picture. Hopefully I won't get stung. Look, the bees love this stuff. So, by the way, it's also known as Spanish needles or beggar's tick. Um, but my favorite use for it is for that lingering cough after a cold and flu, that uh, a teaspoon to a tablespoon, if it has clear and white phlegm, will resolve that cough usually in about five minutes or less in a single dose. It can be used for any other type of cough, but it's not as magical for that lingering cough after a cold and flu. There's research to support it for leukemia, chronic malaria, and Bruner even talks about it for things like chronic Lyme disease. So whether you're putting it in your soups and stews, a stir fry with scrambled eggs, using it topically for bug bites, or internally for chronic cough or a variety of other issues, this magical Florida native, you should be keeping it around at least because of its beauty and because the bees need it to have their breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This is Bob Lindy at the Tradition School of Herbal Studies talking to you about Biden's Alba Spanish Needles in St. Petersburg, Florida.